So you were clinically dead? Yeah. And welcome back to this episode. This is part two of KWC. And again with me in the studio, I have Gurbit Seng. Hey! Yeah! 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 What? Oh. You're not so wet anymore. Can you give me a context to that? <laughs> <laughs> you for those of you, part two. Well, yeah, it's true because no, no because because if do, for those of people, those people who watched the the first episode, the first part of this episode, <laughs> yes. right? They would know. Yes. And you just had to go and moisten yourself again, right? Yes, Did you? I have to. Yeah, yes. yeah. Why the fuck do you have to do that, man? Okay, okay. Your poor little hearts are all wet now. Yeah, it's set hard. Oh, tiny little hearts in your shirt. Yes. <laughs> okay, welcome back, Gurmit. Um, we had a lot. We had lots to talk about in the first episode. Oh, yes. I think part of the first part of the show. Yeah. Um, and that's only the early part of your career. Um, okay. Let's talk about life at home. Life at home. I have two daughters and one son. Girl. Girl. Boy. Boy. Girl. And girl. Youngest. So the boy is the middle child. Yes, he is. Right. Okay. So you're a devoted family man. I like to think so. Okay. Um, What's what do you like? think? <laughs> What's it like for you? I mean, as as like a dad, me? yeah. It's uh, I. How do I put this uh, without sounding ungrateful? <clears throat> huh? I I love my career. Okay. I love for for me it was never work. Yeah. You know, to go to a place to do sitcom and laugh out while I'm doing it and make people laugh as well, and then get paid for doing that. I mean, that's a dream job. But it gives it? you diarrhea every time we do shit like no, that. No, that's the hosting thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but then, you know, there's a price to pay because I was doing so many kinds of shows, your uh, drama, your comedy, your mm-hmm. movies, mm-hmm. TV reality, uh, talk show, children's show. Government sings everywhere, man. Everywhere, You heard right? the song before? Yes. You heard that song, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I didn't have time for my family, right? Mm-hmm. So... That was one bit that I, if I can say, uh, to be honest, I regret not being there for my family, for my kids. Because I was absent father. I was out there in front of camera doing all that and providing for the family, which is great. But many a times I would be home after they have fallen asleep. Mm-hmm. And before they get up, I go to work again. Okay. Do, so. they, do your kids think that, that really feel that you were an absent father? Not in that, so many in words. Mind, no, right? not in so many words. But you know, I missed their birthday parties. I missed their birthday. I missed the wedding anniversary. Stuff like that. That you know, yeah. a regular father would be there for. But I can't. You know, I can't tell. I can't tell the audience. Hey guys, uh, today on Life on Five, I won't be doing the show. Chris is doing it. Uh, today on Gamit's World, uh, it will be Chris World. <laughs> you know, I can't do that. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, because your commitment to the program, right? Yeah. To, to yeah. the shoots and stuff. Yeah. So how about now? Do your kids feel, and, and even your missus, do they feel that way, that you've been absent? It's a double-edged sword, isn't it? There was one time uh, a newspaper reporter, or was it magazine, asked my daughter, who was only uh, 12, 13 years old, right. what's it like to be the daughter of this uh, superstar, Gabit Singh? Mm-hmm. Her reply was, my father sometimes seems to me like a mythical figure. His ins and outs I know not about. Oh, wow. Yeah. But she also said that she loves me and she understands what I'm doing as for the family. But uh, yeah, you can tell that they yearn to be, you know, with me more if they could. But but the reason why, I mean, yeah, sure, you have your your your, your call sheets given to you. You yeah. know, you have to be present for all the shoots. This is a commitment artist like us, right. even me. We have to yeah. make those commitments, right? Right. But you've lived a hard life yourself, mm. as you mentioned in part one. Hard you know, life as well. What? You came from a uh, poor family, yeah. A family. yeah. You yeah. know, you, your weekends were spent with mom and dad at, at, at the uh, bank. At the bank, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And right now, you're working hard. Is it because also? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that deep down inside, I cannot let my own family go through that. Oh, for sure. I mean, um, growing up in a poor family, I always felt inadequate. Yeah. And I always told myself when I grew up, I want to be able to provide for my family. I tell you this, when I was 13 years old in a bank, lying down on the <laughs> bed made of uh, twine and everything, yeah. I prayed to God. I said, I have no disrespect for security guards or jaga or watchmen, mm-hmm. but I know the finances can be hard. Yeah. My father has to do, do, do jobs just to get us to schools and all that. 
So I pray to God, can I next time not be a jugger? My grandfather was a jugger. My father is a jugger. My grade's not doing well. I might end up as a jugger. <laughs> so I told my God, please don't let me be a jugger. Please let me be something else so that I can provide for the family and be there for the family. And that was me 13 years old, praying. And right now, when you look back, you said that you were an absent dad. Your daughter said what she did when she was just 12 or 13 years old. Yeah. But today, do, does the family understand, really understand why you had to do what you had to do based on your background as well? Well, it wasn't so much based on my background. They knew I was doing also because I wanted to give the best to my yeah. wife, my kids based and all the that. background, right? isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and they understand that. But, you know, like I said, it comes with a price because they, they, I took up this job, I took up this industry, not them. But the industry is such that when you're famous, your whole family is famous too. Yeah. And sometimes for the wrong reason, meaning that some of my uh, uh, daughters or children's friends didn't really want to be their friends until they found out I was a father. Ooh. You know, so it's not, it's all fake. Yeah, yeah. And my wife told me this story when uh, she was at a, this very bourgeois boutique and she was in the shorts and sandals and t-shirt with the kids, right? And she said, nobody came to me at all mm. because they don't know who I am. Yeah. I was downstairs parking the car. Right. And as soon as I stepped in and put my arm around her, they realized, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Singh, how are you doing? Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Can I get you a drink? Uh, let's sit over here. And then, wow, she right. said, so plastic. Uh, yeah, so. very plastic, man. So these are little things that my family had to deal with, right? Right. Uh, that people may or may not uh, appreciate. Sure. Right? Sure, but it is yeah. plastic. Um, right now, today, in this, right now, this moment, would you still consider yourself to be an absent father? Oh, now, no, now I'm o uh, omnipresent. <laughs> 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 because in, in, <laughs> in 2015, I left the, the station, right. right, to be with the family. So I was there, I'm now there every day for the family, mm -hmm. you know, we're in a group chat, so I can send them here, send them there. Sometimes the joke is this, uh, this is the joke. Uh. Sometimes I wake up, right, I get, I get messages like, my wife will say, okay, I'm off to this, and then my daughter will say, okay, I'm off to that, my son is off to that. I'm alone at home, uh, by myself. <laughs> And I'm like, hey! Absent family. I gave up my job, you know! <laughs> Where's everyone? Where's everyone? <laughs> uh, but no, that's cool. It's cool. So I'm very happy to be able to have that opportunity, the privilege to say, okay, I stop now, tone it down. I didn't leave the industry. I left the station. But at least now I call the shots. Right. And I can say no to certain things right. because I'm the boss now yeah. of my own time, my own calendar. And then I can make that time for my family and, and do stuff with them. So... How old are the kids now? My eldest daughter will be 24 this year. Wow. My son will be 20 this year. Wow. And my youngest daughter turned eight this year. Eight? In February, yeah. Eight, Pr two. 24, eight, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight, 20, 10, 24. Because my, when my wife turned 40, she said, if you want one last one before shop close. Ah, so I quickly went to buy her. <laughs> and you still have sufficient... Uh, I have. Okay. They're great swimmers. Uh, Joseph Schooling! <laughs> I was about to say that, but I didn't want to because it was so freaking rude. Okay, Joseph what is Schooling! Rude? Joseph Schooling! I have Let no more see Joseph Schooling. As as Mike. Ah. Sorry, sorry, Colin and May. I didn't really mean to do that, but uh, Gerbit started it first. Uh, <laughs> I have to okay, apologize well, to Joe's parents. Joseph Schooling, well done, well done. Thank you for putting us on the map. But really, at 40, and you were how old when you. 45. We are five Dude, years different. Dude, what did you do, man? The Tonka Ali's must have been fantastic. No, there's no Tonka Ali. It's all natural. All Thanks natural, to my really? genes from my parents. <laughs> my father was very well endowed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Too much info. <laughs> Let's just say the sacks were not empty. All right. <laughs> the shopping bags were full. Okay. The manufacturing plant before they decided to shut down and you just threw your raw materials in. And it's, it's very cool, no? When, whenever we decided we want to have a child, it will, will happen. Bloody Murphy's Law doesn't work with you for man, this is right, concerned, huh? Right, I know, it's very weird. We're just like, okay, Lucky let's have man. a child, shall we? Okay, then, then, then next, I'm pregnant. Lucky man. <laughs> um, your daughter went into a, into a particular retail store once. Yes. And heard some... Yes. Rap, rap music. Lewd lyrics. Lewd misogynistic 
lyrics. Oh, okay. That's what oh, she wrote. Big, she wrote that. Big, she wrote, okay. big freaking word, dude. I know. It took me a whole half a day you know, to practice pronouncing that. Do you know? <laughs> good on you. Well done. <laughs> the teacher will be so proud watching the show. But do you know my, my daughter self published a book when she was only 13 years old? Really? She's published by two books and she has a great vocabulary. She, she and does. my yeah. wife, they love reading. They have uh, vocabulary here. I'm like underground. I give you an example. 18 months old. Uh -huh. Keep that in mind, okay? 18 months old. What okay. can you do when you're 18 months old? What can you say 18 months old? Gaga, -ga, Google. Okay? Yeah, da -da. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing theatre. Uh -huh. Backstage, she comes back with my wife, of course, carrying her. Yeah. One of the uh, uh, actors uh, offer her a candy. Right. My 18-month-old daughter, who's going to be 24 this year, says to the auntie, no, thank you. It can be a choking hazard. Boom, my drop. The actor turns to me and said, did, did your daughter <laughs> just say to me, choking hazard? And I said, yeah, because when we tell her, we use the actual words, you know, like, oh, if stranger gives you a candy, be careful because it could be a choking hazard. Yes, papa, yes, mama, and all that. And when we see a dog, we'll just say, that's a dog, not a whoa, whoa. <laughs> or a meow meow and then if I know the breed I'll say oh that's a dog that's an Alsatian or that's a dog so you really didn't bring, bring PCK home huh no well I <laughs> maybe I don't know <laughs> I mean but, uh, 18 months you could say that it's yeah, amazing right? I read her letter it was yeah. so eloquently written right yeah. there's another letter she wrote to the forum page okay. and this one I, I have a clipping of it mm -hmm. there was a time when the reporters were just hating me just for the sake of hating, just to get the readership up, right? So they said things about, you know, I suck as a host and all that kind Did of thing. They? Yes, there was one particular reporter who kept doing that when I was this doing my talk show. This is the Straits Times. Uh, yes. And that was fine dandy because you got to do your job, I got to do my job, right? Yeah. That's fine. But then he became personal. He started writing about how I'm a lousy father and a person and all that. My daughter couldn't stand it. She wrote into a forum page. And she, she said, you know. And they published it. And they published it. So if you want to talk about his uh, uh, professionalism or uh -huh. his uh, capacity to do his job and all that, that mm -hmm. is fine and dandy. You are right to your opinion. But you do not live in the house. You have no right to say what is like as a dad or as a person or as a fellow human being. Wow. And how old was she again when she did that? 13. But she's got this really strong sense of. Um, Empathy? Yes. Yeah. She likes to champion. She feels like, you know, like now, Myanmar is going through this horrible ordeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she feels for them. Mm. Yeah, she feels for them. Wow. I told, I told her she should be a social worker or join UN, United <laughs> Nations or something. I don't know. Yeah. So what do you aspire your kids to be? Anything. I told them when they were growing up mm -hmm. that they can be anything they want to be as long as they're happy doing it and it's legal. Mm -hmm. Because I did not want them to... I said you did not have to be a a high-ranking, high-paying job to impress me. Because if you get up every day grouchy and bitter, I would have failed you as a parent. I would feel sorry for you, I feel sorry for myself. And I say, I'm a classic example, a textbook. When I joined the TV station and all that, <laughs> I was so proud. I went to my mom, my late mom, and said, they gave me a contract. I joined the TV station full-time. <laughs> and my mom said, what for? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? What for, mom? I it's TV full time. <laughs> Said this industry, no la, forget it la. They will, you know, after a while they'll forget you. They'll throw okay, you one side. Okay. Then one year went by. <laughs> two yeah. years, never throw one side. No. <laughs> Walking down Ocho Road, right? Somebody, everybody saying hello, hello, hello. And one person saw, hey, hello, come here. And then we talk, talk, talk for five minutes. Then he goes off. Then my mom said, who was that? I said, I don't know. What do you mean, I don't know? I said, I don't know. Then you talk to me for so long. For what? <laughs> because he talked to me, what? I, it's a fan. He liked my show. I just, wow, okay. And then she was very, very pleased and proud of me when suddenly all the relatives who were supposed to be dead yeah. became alive. <laughs> <laughs> Resurrected. <laughs> Resurrected. Hey, hey, when are you coming to my house for tea? Ah, long time no meeting. Come la. Let's, let's meet. Uh, let's be. Bring your son also. <laughs> if you can't come, you can't come in, it's okay. Let's bring your son. Just let your son come. Uh. You don't come actually. As long as the son come. Uh. <laughs> So uh, yeah. basically, no, no. Your your mom said all that. You know what for and all that. She said what for? Why do you? Yeah. You know. So yeah. what if you join a TV station and you yeah. know they get no big deal. Yeah. No big deal, right? <laughs> after after you became the celebrity, the yeah. superstar. Yeah. How did your mom? She feel was proud. About that? She was so proud of me. She was like, I could see she's smiling. And she all didn't that. expect that. She she from the corner of my eye, I could see when I'm signing autographs, taking pictures of people, and she like, wow, a lot of people know him. Huh? <laughs> 
And then my, my sisters, when I went out with them, right, they stopped going out with me already. La. But once in a while, we meet. But back then, when we went out, right, one day we came back, my two younger sisters, they told me, you know, you know bro, we are, we are proud of you, like, and all that. Now. You know, it's amazing, you know, you are this celebrity and all that. But going out with you uh, is like going out with an MP, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're shaking hands, you're carrying babies, you're signing autographs, <laughs> taking pictures. You know, we can't even talk to you. <laughs> it's just like, and then when, I, when my eldest daughter was primary one, uh, there were f- the first few times I went to fetch her from school. Right. I was swarmed, swarmed with autographs uh-huh. and kids and, and helpers and all that. Until one day I was doing this and then I felt a tug. And I looked up, it was my daughter. And she said, Daddy, can we go home? <laughs> <laughs> Poor girl. So, so I said, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. So as I was going home, she asked me, why do they want your signature? I don't understand. So back then she used to watch her uh, high five. One, yeah, two, yeah. three, four, well, high, high five. five. So I said, okay, imagine you're walking down the road and suddenly high five is there. And you're like, so, you'll be so excited. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you want a souvenir. Wouldn't the signature be a good souvenir? Then she, oh. Ah, so that's how you explain it. To yeah. her. Well, well done, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well so done. these are things that, you know, uh, uh, other families don't go through. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I had to protect the privacy of my family too. Yeah, like um, royalty, mate. No la. Yeah la. No la. Yeah la. <laughs> my wedding was televised, but no lah. I know, la. I know it was. That's what I'm saying. You know, the manager came to me and said, "Gabi, are you married?" Or not? I said, "No." Okay, when you get married, let me know first. I said, "What?" <laughs> yeah, because when you get married on the televised, it's huh? Can I, can I ask my wife, my girlfriend? Then, and then she said, "Okay, yeah, sure, but yeah, it would be an honor, I guess." <laughs> That's, That's so why weird. I kept telling you in part one, you're royalty. I, I don't. I didn't feel that. I just. I was just a guy doing a job. Anyway, I'm and glad. Having fun doing I'm it. glad you didn't feel that because otherwise, I would feel really awkward with you sitting next to me right now. Yeah. Because this government, I I'm. T- I've been talking with. It's yeah. amazing. Oh no! Come no, on. No, no. Seriously, seriously, man. This is not the government I see on in, in TCS on MediaCorp, man. This government is a far, far better version. Oh, thank you. Really? I mean, to their credit, I can't do what I do here in front of TV, right? Because yeah, the sucks, program right? sets it such a way. That sucks, right? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you're so scripted. In every time. You're t- so stiff and no, you're No, PCK, right? PCK, I wasn't scripted that much, you know, because we would have rehearsals and all that. Yeah. And then I'll throw in my two cents worth and everything. Okay. And then in like uh, Singapore Idol, reality TV, it's yeah. live, right? You yeah. can't control me. That's it. <laughs> okay. But it's yeah. still not the government I, 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 I saw on stage. Right. Right. Still not that yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, because we still have some like protocols. I said to are, you earlier yeah. on today, uh, in, in, in the show, right? Yeah. This government was that government I saw. And the uh, forum. At the forum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I really enjoy this government a lot more. Sorry, but I'm saying. That sounded sexual, actually. <laughs> yeah. I do. You want to rephrase I am that. so fucking you... straight, you would oh. not believe, man. Okay, anyway, just I, that I, I don't have enough Joseph, Joseph Schoolings. Sorry, Colin May again. What? Mm. What? Okay. Um, now that we're talking about MediaCorp, uh, lots have been written about you know you leaving. I mean, mm. all the interviews that you've given. We had but a I press would... conference. You, <laughs> <laughs> you see? No, 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 no. Leaving, leaving MediaCorp government segments have a no, press no, conference. No, I didn't ask for it. No, I went to the man. You're like Tony Stark, man. The, well, I no. am fucking Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is more like copper. <laughs> Or maybe aluminium. <laughs> but you know, when, when we came to the part where they say, okay, it's coming up, six months time, your contract's going to finish. Let's right. sit down and talk about, you know. An extension. Extension and right. then rates and what have you. Well, like said, footballer lah. Uh, then I said, uh, <laughs> yeah. Then I said, speak, speak to Sir Ferguson. No, and then I said, uh, maybe you want to hold on to that. Then they said, what do you mean? So I said, maybe I don't think I'll be extending or renewing my contract. They're like, huh? what do you? I, seriously, I said, yeah, yeah. So they said, okay, then can you not, say anything yet until we get our press releases and everything and we'll have a proper uh, press conference for you lah, to, okay. to say your goodbyes and done. I said, okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And then wow. That's what happened. Why are you such royalty? This is what I'm Stop saying. Stop saying that one. Lah. But it's true, bro. Yeah. You can't run away from that. This is what people see. Oh, really? Yeah. I think so. You saw nothing. <laughs> so lots of things have been written about you leaving. Uh, yeah, you yeah. had your press conference and all that. Yeah. But I'd like to hear from you in your own words. On, on the, the, my own words. What was that? What was that? Urdu? My, or, no, my own words. It's not even invented <laughs> yet. I just made it up. On the real reason why you left. The real reason? Is there a real reason why you left? Because I want to have this interview with you. 
No, Thank the reason God is, bollocks, no, man. <laughs> no, it, the reason is the family thing, lah. It's just but literally it's, I really, was seeing my reason? family because I, you know, a lot of people question why I left. They say was it wasn't because why? you were tired. You grew tired no. of suffering. I grew. I I always say this. I grow tired from the things I do, but not mm-hmm. of the things I do because the dream job, man. Yes, con- granted, when I go home after doing PCK or doing a reality show or hosting whatever, I will be blanked out. I'll be dead tired. Autopilot, go home, right? Yep, yep. Zombie eyes. Yep. But next day, I'll be like happy to go again because I was happy to do the job that I was blessed with. Is okay. See? So there was no other like reasons a, besides what you've told everyone. No. Yeah. For I'm leaving. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't have to apologize. I just want to hear. Yeah. That's all. I wish I had something else to tell you. No, you don't have to. Don't I stopped having diarrhea. So don't I need leave. to conjure anything. I just really conjure. wanted to dig deep a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> How? But then, not long after. Yes. I was driving in my car in the morning and I w- t- tuned into gold. 90.5. 9.05. Not 90.5. I, I don't care. I don't work for the fucking station. So Sorry. Gold 90.5 <laughs> is one of the every now and then listeners. I <clears> am <throat> uh, hey, a listener, man. I don't yeah. work for the freaking corporation, yeah. man. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Gold 90.5. You can even say 9.05. Oh, suck <laughs> eggs. I'm saying it. Um, yeah. So, um, so angry. But no, no, I'm not angry. I'm just, I don't need to really conform to that. Right. Uh, goal 90.5. Um, you, I tune into that station and then yeah. I hear, hang on a second. Hang on. There second. is Mike. There's Vern. And then, Kermit? <laughs> How'd that happen, man? I always has, have said uh, that when TV has had enough of me, mm-hmm. I would like to go to radio because I love music. Do you know that in the early part of my life, I yeah. hated music. Oh, come. I could not oh, you understand were, you were dancing, why... You were no, doing... this is when I'm uh, below the age of 10. Okay. Primary four, right? Before then, I thought it was rubbish. Like. You take some things, you make some noise, then you try to sing with the... Ha, ha, ha. I, like, I could not come and say, what's going on? It's stupid looking to me. Okay. It sounds stupid. And you pay for these people? I don't understand at all. I did not have a music bone at all. No. Really? Not even a fiber. I don't know why. I do not know why. But then suddenly, it kicked in. I heard stylistics. Mm-hmm. If I have money, I go wild. Uh-huh. How you first dress you like, like a queen. queen. Right? Yeah. I, I was sold, man. Suddenly, I had soul. And I, I appreciated music. And it was a stylistics? It was a stylistics. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, right? And the guy's voice was amazing. And I thought I'm going to BGS. Tragedy! Oh. <laughs> you know, I well, like the you can tell by the way I use my walk. Woman's way. No time to talk. Right, right. There you go. I think I was sucker for Soseto. But I suddenly love uh, music and all that. Why did I tell you sorry? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> you didn't have a passion for music. You were going to ra- went into radio. It was a music ah, station, right? So yeah, so yeah. I love music. I yeah. play music everywhere. I go uh, whether I'm at home, whether I'm on a motorbike. I All of a sudden, one day, makes like Ichila music hit you. Then I like this, right? Yeah, yeah. So I thought if I one day can become radio DJ, that'd be mm. so fun, right? You play music and you listen to music, mm. you sing along. Nobody mm. knows, or mm. people do know if I turn on the mic and then <laughs> uh, and just have fun, right? So out of the blue, I was in the car and I saw uh, those one of those promo ads on the buses, right? Okay. The, the, the show and all that kind yeah. of the DJs, the banners and stuff. Yeah. yeah. On the on the bus. Yeah. And I thought, oh, let me just give radio a call and see if because uh, I've done before part time like a two week stint when someone goes on a yeah, holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember that one. Yeah. You were you were you were taking over someone who's on leave. Yeah, and then yeah. before that, I did with Mark and Brian. For, yeah, yeah. Supposed to be only just. Uh, 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 three months went on for six months because mm. uh, we all enjoyed it and people thought we should stay. Um, so I call and I say, "Hey, uh, I just saw the bus ad and this is out <laughs> the blue, random." But I thought if there's an opening, I would like to come in and have a little talk and discuss. And the manager said, "Did you just bug my office? I was about to text you." No way. No way. Yeah, I said no. I, I, you seriously? Yeah, I was going to text you later on to say, "Hey." Can we have coffee and talk about maybe you coming on board on a part time basis wow. or whatever? Whatever, yeah, you know, just talk. Wow. I say, okay, are you free tomorrow? Okay, let's meet. And then within a week, papers were signed and all that. 
And I went through training, like listen to what they do, what the show is like, and yeah. all. Went then, through the four hour clock. Huh? You went through the four, four hour clock. Yeah, yeah. So on 19 yeah. August, I came on air live. Mm. Mm. And man, it was thrilling for the first two weeks. But after that, it was very tiring. Why? Because I realized that my body couldn't adjust to waking up at 4 30 in the morning <laughs> on a daily basis. That, oh, God. Okay. And I thought it was just a. A, a, a temporary thing, <laughs> right? And it went on and on. And then it would only happen from Mondays to Fridays. Yeah. But Saturdays and Sundays, when I wake up, when the sun is up, I would function the whole day. But Monday to Friday, I'll be sluggish. I will have to slug through dinner and dance at night. I would have to, in the afternoon, I can't function properly. I'll be like yawning, but cannot sleep. And there was a time when I tried to adjust my sleeping time. I slept for one hour in the afternoon, didn't work. I slept two hours, didn't work. Three, four, one night, I, one day I actually slept seven hours nap, woke up, had my dinner, went back to sleep again, right. and woke up at four o'clock, and right. I still couldn't function. Okay. On radio, I was like, hi, 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 But after we finished, oh, man. So you were doing gigs as well outside, D&Ds and stuff, yeah, while you were doing but that this. wasn't a problem. That okay. wasn't a problem. The gig wasn't a problem. In fact, the gig was the good thing. was like, hey, okay, I'm in front of the camera on stage. I have to perform, right? Yeah. But if I wasn't, I was just myself, yeah. I couldn't. I started having memory lapses. Like, I'll go somewhere and like, wait, where was I supposed to go, huh? I was supposed to go. No, this is a memory lapse. Then right I now. have to. What? <laughs> That's, there's a memory lapse. Yeah. Why, why am I here? Uh, then, then, then you kick in there. Oh yeah, I, I was supposed to go uh, there. You know. So and and I was I was a bit now, nowadays I'm a bit more worried about my health because I, I'll share with you about this incident. Yeah. Um. Uh, I was at the gym. You know, I have a gym instructor. My wife bought it for me for my right. birthday. Wow. So fitness trainer, everything doing PT, very well. Yeah. yeah, doing very well, mm. all that kind of thing. Uh, this one particular day, we we're supposed to. I supposed to go to the gym. There's a spa next door. Later, I'm supposed to join my wife. Mm. And then we have a couples massage. Right. I suddenly get a phone call. Mm. I'm in the restroom, mm -hmm. and I pick up the phone, mm. and she says, "Where, where are you?" Mm -hmm. I say, "I don't know." She said, what do you mean you don't know? You're in the gym, right? I said, there's a room full of lockers. Uh, and that's all I know. How did I get here? She said, you're in the gym. I bought you a, a package with an instructor. I have an instructor? Yeah, you have the membership here. I have a membership here? Yeah, you're supposed to join me in a spa next door. There's a spa? So she said, okay, uh, can you just come out? And she Talk to me through the phone. I came out to the front door. Lucky I didn't say, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I recognized, recognized her. I was fully dressed except right. for my socks and shoes. Okay. Um, later on, the instructor would tell me, another instructor told me that I came in myself to, perf to, to work out. Right. I did everything. I went back to the shower and that's the last he saw me. Right. My bag was all packed except my socks and shoes. I wasn't, wasn't put on. And she said for the next, I kept asking the next uh, the, the same 10 questions over and over again. Why, how did I get here? I have a gym? I, and he knew something was wrong, neurologically. Yeah. So it drove me straight to uh, Mount uh, uh, Glen Eagles. Right. Uh, and checked in and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met a neurologist and mm -hmm. he said, we'll do an MRI, we'll have a scan of your brain, what have you and all that. Yeah. And I said, okay. And then to share history, and I said, in the past, I fainted before because low sugar, I have low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So maybe I fell and hit my head mm -hmm. in the shower or something. Then they checked the head. No, no, no bumps, nothing, all that. Okay. But I said, let's just send you to the cardiologist. Maybe he will uh, check your heart rhythm. Maybe you skip a bit or something like that, just to be safe. I okay. said, okay. So we went to uh, the cardiologist and he said, we'll do a... Uh, uh, tilt bed test. Okay. Uh, what What's happens that? is that you lie on a bed, uh -huh. they strap you up, uh -huh. then they bring you up like that and okay. face a white wall uh -huh. for 30 minutes, three zero. So you get really like tranquilized, like damn zoom, zone out, right? <laughs> then they give you this little liquid that uh -huh. will quickly pump your heart as if you suddenly started sprinting. Okay. Uh, they want to see a threshold. Uh, 5% of the patients will pass out. And when that happens, the bed will automatically go down, the brain uh, will be flooded with the, your blood again, yeah. and you'll wake up. La. Okay. And they'll say, oh, what heartbeat, then you fainted, blah, blah, blah. La. Right. So they put that thing on me. I, I said, wow, guys, my heart is, and before I could even finish my sentence, I passed out. When I woke up, I saw doctors and nurses looking down at me. I was okay. flat down. And I jokingly said to the doctor, wow, I guess I'm one of the 5% who passed out. And he said, Mr. Singh, not only did you pass out, but your heart stopped. <laughs> yeah. 
holy crap. So they said, your, your sternum, you'll feel some pain because we've been pumping you to resuscitate you. You were, so you were clinically dead? Yeah. For how long? Do you they know? Said, Did they said uh, for more than 30 seconds. Okay. So, I mean, I had to kind of absorb that, right? Then, um, before that, the next, uh, before that, the 48 hours, right? I had no memory of my 48 hours in the hospital. So there was still, it was still a lost point in your life, that one. Yeah. So the neurologist said, I will never get back that memory. It's lost. And he, when he showed me this, he said, we did a scan of your brain and we found some scars. I said, oh shit, what the hell does that mean then? Yeah, yeah. And he said, that means you're not stupid. You're actually using your brain. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you waited to say that joke? Well, uh, this he one. Said, he said, yeah. I, I'm sorry, but that... that he couldn't uh, resist he it. He couldn't resist yeah. it. Okay. But and he then? said, that's good for you. But I don't see any problem with your brain. The heart uh, surgeon also said, I don't see any problem with your heart as well. We do not understand what happened. So since that day, this happened about two or three years ago. Since oh, that day, oh, for that me, recent, yeah? for me, life is really short. Yeah. B- before you even know it, doesn't have to be an accident or a piano dropping on your. It could be just a simple test, and you're gone. That could have been my last day. So you mean you mean from three years ago to today, we still don't know. No. You still don't know. No. They, so there's nothing that they can diagnose. They can't give you any medication no. to prevent anything from happening no. to you. I was in ICU for two days and then observation for another three days. And nobody could fucking find out what happened. No. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. So very, very grateful every day when I get up in the morning and be with my family. You know? <sighs> yeah. And thanks for sharing that, man. No, no. Yeah. Good grief. <laughs> Quick, ask another question so we can hap- yeah, end yeah, happily. Yeah, I want to say happy ending, uh, but that'd be wrong. Are you still emceeing now? I must say what? Are you still emceeing? Yes, 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 yes. I'm still in the industry. Uh, I host dinner and dances, and now more like you know virtual Zoom, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> hybrid, I, hybrid. You know, hybrid. it's it's so funny because I was doing this virtual thing, right? And the production company and the clients came to me later on and said, hey, great show, well done, loved it and all that. Mm. So sorry to do this kind of things and all that. And I said, no, no, guys, you don't understand. This to me is TV. Yeah. I was doing this all my life. All your life. You know, we have cameras there. I'll do the, the, the yeah. whatever show. And there's nobody around and you watch it at home. So you're used to that kind of... You yeah. Know. But if there's no... but. Would an audience actually drive you even, you know, to, For do, sure. to, 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 to For be sure. even more inspired, motivated to do a show? Yeah, also would distract me a bit more. Lah. I'll go yeah. cuckoo like I've just done before. But, um, you know, if, if you really put your mind to it, if you focus that you have to do that and you're, you, you really want to deliver and perform, mm-hmm. then you, you do it regardless. What's your advice for other entertainers? Buy high, sell low. Huh? What, sorry? What is your Never cross the road before the road. green light comes on. Okay. And Always tip the waiter. Keep your clothes on when you're crossing the road on the zebra crossing. Yeah. What Don't is cross the zebra. Okay, you know, I'm gonna get I, I'm not gonna get to this next fucking question. <laughs> what is your advice, Gurmit? Yes. For other entertainers in the industry. Leave it to me. Don't come in. <laughs> oh, that was no. fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> um I would I would say this to you. Well, first of all, that triggers a memory of uh, another story, Brian Richmond. Okay, right, Uncle Brian. I'm not even six months in my TV world. Mm-hmm. I I we we bump into each other at the reception. Okay, TV. Great and guy. And he said, "Hey, yeah. good man, come. Let me talk to you for a while." I said, "Yes, Uncle Brian." He sits me down on the sofa and he says, "Look, um, don't be like some artists uh, who come in here." Well, you know, steady, steady. And then after one year, they think they're damn famous. Huh? Mm. They're going to open restaurant, la, open this, la, open that, la, open everything. <laughs> <laughs> then after, that, after one year, they crash. Then they come back again. <laughs> no tail with a tail between the legs. So just stay here and do your work, enjoy it, and, and everything else will be all right. So I say, oh, thanks. Thanks for the advice. Mm-hmm. You know, I stayed for 20 years. <laughs> but I have to tell the, the, the new blood that's coming in, because yeah. I see that a lot. Yeah. on a regular basis, they think it's easy to just come in, record a show, mm-hmm. and then suddenly get endorsements, wear sunglasses <laughs> in the night or so. 
Uh, and then you know that's good. Done. Trying to do no. a Douglaso wearing sunglasses at night. Oh, but that is because of his eye thing, I think. I know, right, 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 right. But people don't know. People should know. People should know. He should have that's a press conference. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, Douglaso, gonna have a press conference know, right? with his and sunglasses ha- at night. Cut your hair, lah. Yeah, I cut my hair for you. Now you cut my hair. His hair's kind of short now. It's not yeah, that it is, long. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we know we all worked hard. We all pay our dues. When we do PCK, for example, mm-hmm. they do not realize that it's not like a half an hour show, so we shoot only half an hour. No, yeah. it's a five-day work thing. Yeah. We rehearse for four days, then we, the fifth day we record and everything. Okay. And if I'm shooting outside, um, you may or may not know this, but when I'm shooting outside, we are open to the elements. So we do take after take after take to no fault of mine. So I could be saying, hi, I'm going to be saying, welcome to the pop Oh, okay. Fawn. Okay, do that, do that again. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm going to be saying, welcome to the... And then the cloud covers the sun. Yeah. Oh, okay, we have to wait for the cloud to go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, okay. Hi, I'm going to be saying, hey, come here, hi. Hey, hey, hello. Yeah, that's the... Yeah. It's, hot. So you just it's a nightmare, it, man. And you get really, I do not, I cannot overemphasize this, physically and mentally very tiring. Yes. But if you have a passion for this, if this you, you enjoy doing this, that will be secondary, mm-hmm. you know, and you'll you'll pay your dues, and then something good hopefully will come out of it. Can you leave the uh, yes. most important oh. <laughs> <laughs> advice yeah. to any or to all other entertainers in the industry bef- to just to end the show? Yeah. Okay. What is your advice to them in overcoming this dry spell during this pandemic? Oh, right. Let's let's end the pro- the. Uh, the show with your advice advice from Gurmit Singh yeah the best advice you think you can give I think I'll just uh, say practice what I preach kind of thing because last year uh, my entire calendar was wiped out okay so I went through the same thing also you know? it's not like Gurmit Singh is so you had a dr- you, it was dry oh, for you as well dude the emails came in we had to cancel we had to cancel and say hey so I turned to my family hey time to eat grass again <laughs> 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 Go to the neighbor's house. Our grass let it grow a bit more. Because it was really scary. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. In in the old days when I was full time with the station, mm. no such worry because it's a fixed income every month, right? Yes. But this time being a freelancer, my goodness, my testicles dropped. I went for a jog. Don't worry about it. You already have your your, your third and fourth. That's final true. Child, I don't need so them anymore. Yeah, you want some? I can yeah, get some to you. It's okay, you can just drop the you you know, <laughs> drop the bollocks, man. No worries. I don't know how we came from advice to testicles. <laughs> You started it. I did. <laughs> um, so it was truly a frightening realization that, yeah. my goodness, all of us in this industry yeah. are going to suffer yeah. like big time. Yeah. But like anything else, if you persevere, if you stay true to yourself, it will turn around. So slowly we are seeing now there are first virtual events. Yeah. Now there are hybrid, hybrid events. events. And the rules will slowly loosen up a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, we just have to... I hear stories about other people taking other jobs uh, because they have to just see this through. Yeah. And I respect you, right? Because it would have been such an easy excuse to say, oh, I'm going through a bad time, therefore I now commit crime. Yeah. Easy, right? Yeah. But people who actually say, okay, fine, you know, I'll drop my ego. Yeah. You know, I am supposed to be this high-flying photographer, for example. There's mm. a story of this, this guy who takes pictures all over the world. No, uh, symphony conductor. Yeah, yeah, in Europe. that's it. Yeah, and yeah. he's a grab. Yeah. Uh, deliverer. Yes, yes, correct. Respect. Correct. You yeah. know, because these are the kind of people who say, "Okay, I'm in a rut, but it's not about my ego. It's about what I have to do. What I have to do. Man's got to do what a man's got to do. It is what it is. Yeah. And then when the times change, jump back on again. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Great advice. <laughs> We've come to the end of the, of the show, but we will end with this finale. It's called the quick fire segment. I will be asking you quick questions. You can okay. give me you give me quick answers. Okay. So like sentences or just one word? Uh, that's your call. Just okay. give me a quick answer. Okay. Let's start with this one. All right. Who was the one person that you met in your life that you will never forget? Jesus. Favorite PCK episode? Oh, the one he talked French. <laughs> Really, he, he lost his memory. Hey, art imitating life, huh? Because he's scared Shit, I just he realized lo- that. He lost his memory. Yes, he did. Because he was he was uh, watching, uh, he was passing by, the TV was on, there was a French chef. He was watching it. And then something happened. He fell down or something knocked his head or whatever. Then when he woke up, 
Hello everybody, I'm a Portugal private limited. Uh, it's very nice to see. Oh, Margaret. Oh. Then Rosie came in. Oh, who is this? I don't like this woman. Uh, this is, oh, Margaret. But fuck, the same thing happened happen to you in life, in real life. Right? Art imitating life. In, in, but this one is life, life imitating, imitating art. art. Right? Because yeah. the art came first. Yeah, okay. Funny, yeah. So that's your favorite PCK episode. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to the third one. The next question. I actually have another episode that's very funny. Also. Okay, which one? This one has a bit of a backstory. Uh-huh. It's pretty short answers up by then. Uh, go, on, okay. go ahead, go ahead. So, you know, I was, uh, like I said, I get physically tired and all that kind of thing, right? Uh-huh. So I was thinking, maybe I can take a break from the show. Right. So I told the writers and the producers, can I take like one week, two weeks off? They can lie. the show is called PC Capital Limited. How can you take leave? And I said, oh, that's true. Hey, oh, I got an idea. What if in the story, la, Rosie or somebody says, PCK has gone with service two weeks? Ah. Uh. That's it lah. I rest for two weeks. Good idea. Then continue the story. Yeah. Okay, no, no, the show is about you. You cannot do this kind of thing lah. Okay lah, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> then you know what happens? Oh. Bloody backfire. They do a story about PCK at reservist. <laughs> 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 Everybody has a day off for two weeks and I'm the one doing the show. <laughs> With Chu Bing. And Chu Bing was the captain and I was a lance corporal. <laughs> Well, it was, it was, you know, I couldn't even get angry. It was really so funny that they used an idea that I had to get out of I the think show. I saw that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. PCK <laughs> does reserve this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Okay, uh-huh. next one. Next question. <laughs> if you could teleport back in time to redo or change one thing in your life, where and when would you go? Uh, the beginning where I decided whether to take this job or to become something else. I had was at the crossroads. Okay. I was doing uh, computer programming. I, I love computers, by the way. I play game. I like to play Dota. I still play do, by the way. Uh, Inchi Jeb, that's my nickname. Um, I love computers. I love, I went for uh, informatics. I was planning to do a diploma, advance, and then degree and become a programmer right. or a system analyst. Wow. And But when I got my diploma, at the same time, SBC then gave mm. me a full-time contract. Right. And my wife back then, my girlfriend said, you know, you love performing and all that kind of thing. Why don't you try it for a couple of years? If you don't like it, go back to studies and finish this uh, mm. and become a system analyst. Well, that two years became 20 years. <laughs> I'm still doing it now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what I would have been because, I mean, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but there are times in this streamline of my, my timeline, this team timeline, yeah, yeah. I've asked myself, what, what if, if I was a system analyst? I'm a nobody. I finish the job at five. I go have dinner with my family. Maybe go out with my wife wow. at seven o'clock movie. That's another perspective. huh? Right? Totally different. You, I walk by you. Yeah. I mean, for all you know, this is happening. Mm. And then this is sent to an IT department where I am working. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's me over there. <laughs> Food for thought. Yep. It's, a, it's another perspective. I understand where you're coming from. Here's the next question. Okay. Pikachu, Charizard, Snorlax are the names of Pokemons. If yes. you could name one new Pokemon, what would you name it? Suck my head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that, by the way. Suck my head. No, if you say it fast, it sounds like, you know, like Pokemon. Suck my head. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, if you break it down, Pokemon. <laughs> yes. It's very vulgar. Yeah, it is. Pokemon. <laughs> Here right. we go. So, suck my head is actually very <laughs> PG, all right? I, suck my head is a lot. Suck my head. Yeah, it's not as bad as Pokemon. I mean, if it was a Russian, it was a Kachukakov. <laughs> <laughs> Russian uh, Pokemon. Yeah, I know. I know. Kachukakov. <laughs> um, suck my head. <laughs> it's very strange that you just say Kachukakov because it does, doesn't what? meld or segue very well into the next question, but I have no choice but to do this. If you could meet Jesus... What's it got to do with it? And ask him one question. Yeah. What would that question be? Why mosquitoes? Excuse me? <laughs> oh, you've been wondering about... I've been wondering about that too. Right. You know? What's the use of having them? I mean, in, in the entire ecology of things, what's the usefulness? Right. Really? They, right. Just, they don't pollinate. They don't help yeah. us. They're you know, not like bees or something. Yes. Right? right? They, yeah. yeah. So why... why mos- <laughs> Fuck, you're right. I, I have that same question for him too. Why freaking mosquitoes, man? They just do fuck all, isn't it? Yeah. Just like, suck your fucking I mean, blood. maybe they're supposed to do something good, or maybe they are, but we don't see it. Yeah, That would be so sad. We keep killing have them and to trying to do good. But have you ever tried Googling that shit and find out? I did. There's, so you, there's, <laughs> there's really nothing. There's nothing. 
Oh. Well, it's the same people who got your name wrong. Yeah, you know, I I, I love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, must be the same people. I I I love all living things, right? No matter how bad they are. So yeah. I even a mosquito, I wouldn't kill it. Oh, shut I up, will, you. Yeah, I would just do this. So oh, go, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've I've had dengue, by the way, and even after that. I still don't want to kill them. Dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love all animals. This is so, quick fire. Like at home, right? When somebody it's says, cockroach, my mother, Pia! kill. But now, you won't. No, I won't. I'll oh, dude, it come on. In school, they ask us to bring cockroach, right? For science uh. lab. And then they say, okay, now cut open your cockroaches. I refuse. My teacher scold me upside down. I took the mos- uh, cockroaches and threw it out the window. I fail the lesson, but I don't care. Okay. This is supposed to be quick fire. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, let's move on to the next. Who Suck my cock. Do- sorry. Oh. <laughs> suck my head, sorry. <laughs> Say the wrong thing. <laughs> that one's another Pokemon. Yes. Cousin to suck my head. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Who do you think will be the next PM? Me. <laughs> I don't mind, actually. You know, actually, I don't mind being a president. You know why? I tell you what, it's very selfish. Right? It's very selfish. <laughs> president is about the people, the nation. What can I do for you? But if I become president of... Singapore, I'd be very happy because in the Istana grounds, there is a durian tree. Okay. So I love durians. Huh? Durian. <laughs> I call my butler every day. So James! <laughs> How do you know the butler's name is James? Okay. La. Sing! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously. Resume. Who do you wish, oh, wish would be the next prime minister? Wow, that's a good one. Mm. Uh, I would say Tan Chuan Jin. Okay. Next question. Oh, you stop there. Yeah. What? It's quick fire. Oh, yeah, just move on to yeah, the yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah, you have no opinion. Shut Don't up. get me in trouble. <laughs> okay. Okay. Name another character uh-huh. you played on Gurmit's World that should have a show of his own. Mutu. Okay. So for 20 plus years, yeah. you never pursued the Mutu option. We did. But then, you know, I was doing so many things and 1,001 things that we just, there were so many things we wanted to do, but Mutu was also one of them that we couldn't do. La. Yeah. Okay. It couldn't do. Couldn't do. Why? Uh? Because we were doing so many things. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not the management. I can't just say, hey, everybody, nah, let's do Mutu. Then if people do it, you know, I have to you know, tell them. Then they say, okay, we're into consideration. And then we'll back, get back to you kind of thing. That's but right now, do you think they'll pick it up? I don't know. Nowadays, is, are there any more sitcoms? On <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're right. I don't, right. I don't watch Channel 5 anymore the, for a long time. Yeah. I think the, 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 the environment has changed, right? It's, it's a different, it's a different uh, era now. What do you mean by that? Uh, In what way? Digital? No, not so much digital. It's the content that's moving from good old sitcoms to... Reality TV, mm. you know, love at first sight, la, uh, love blind, la, these mm. are things mm. that people, capo, capo, want, mm. want to do but cannot do, but now they can do. Mm. <laughs> I think that's what most programs are gearing, gearing that for. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. You don't know, huh? Yeah. Just one last question. This is something I'm curious about. Oh, no more the fast do fire. No more. Uh, we're done, actually. Yeah, I'm just going to ask you. It's close already. It is close. Yeah. Just one last question. You've, you left radio? Yes. Because you got tired. Yes. The That's health, the reason. The health thing and all that. Yeah. And there was no one announcing that Gurmit is no longer on the show with Mike and Vern in the morning. Huh? No one announcing it? Yeah. What do you mean? Because all no press sudden, conference. Yeah. No, <laughs> press conference is one. No one said anything because all of a sudden I listened to radio and Gurmit's not there. Yeah. Radio went by differently. They said, uh, you know, we will announce it the day before you leave. We'll mm-hmm. say that tomorrow you're leaving. This is going to be your last day. Mm. Uh, we don't want to shake the ship too much, shake the boat too much. And right. then I said, yeah, I'm fine with that. I, don't want to make a, I didn't want to make a big hoo-ha when I left TV in the first place. So when they said that, I also said, okay, sure, you know. Okay. Who am I? I don't want a diva. But I want a banquet, <laughs> a buffet. <laughs> It's not that. I was just curious. That's all. It was right. my own question because all of a sudden, I turn on the radio, I hear Gurmit on the show. Next thing I knew, I turn on the radio and I don't hear Gurmit on the yeah, show. Yeah, we did a big announcement on radio itself. Then I went to my social media as well. I put it there. So you're not following me on my social media. Obviously. Otherwise, he would have known because I put it there on my Instagram and Facebook. Follow me. Hey, love. No, I have to follow him. <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> I can't only show you, better follow me. I didn't hear the announcement on radio simply because I was listening to 91.3, but no, <gasps> that's not important. So anyway, <laughs> but I don't really listen, listen to 91.3 all the time too. I also switch over to 90.5. Oh, you're fickle-minded, are you? Yeah, but sometimes I go to 91.3. <laughs> so, you know, it all depends, you know. Oh, this song sucks. Oop, switch. Switch. Yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. No, 
Oh, fair enough. I mean, that's your prerogative. What you don't like a song? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know, I know. Possible. I'm just saying, just saying, just saying. That's why I missed the announcement. And yeah, I will follow you on Facebook, <laughs> and Instagram, <laughs> and YouTube, and everything else that you're on. And TikTok. And TikTok too. Okay. Anyway, Gurmi, I'm thank with it. <laughs> you're with it. I yeah. took my CPF I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm still. Le- I'm lit. I'm woke. I'm. I don't know what these terms are. Just don't get cancelled, dude. That's yes. <laughs> <laughs> because people who won't like to cancel. Is it? Oh, fuck yeah. Anyway, Gurmit, thank yes. you so very much, man. Thank it's you. been real fun. Thanks for being so open. Thanks for being so honest. And thanks for being you, mate. Really, really. I, 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 I really mean that. Yeah, Jokes aside, I mean that. Thanks so very much. I wish you all the very best. Same to you. Thank you so much, man. Thank okay. you so much. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Stay sane. I'll see you again in the next episode of KWC. And once again, in your own homes, on your backsides, make sure, give a big round of applause for Gurmit Singh, Michael Pikaki. All right. Bye, everybody. (laughs) 